welcome to CES 2023. We are very excited to be here. First, I want to thank the IoT M2M Council for having an amazing set of speaker events lined up across the three days. Very happy to be here. My name is David Duncan. I'm a consultant with uh, Strategy of Things. We are a Silicon Valley-based innovation firm using strategy, science, and technology to create smarter, safer, more responsive, and resilient cities and communities. I am here today with Carmen Redondo of Kyocera AVX to, to learn a little bit more about the importance of antennas with IO, in IoT. With that said, Carmen, can you give a little introduction about yourself and Kyocera AVX? Hello, everyone. So I'm Carmen Redondo, a director of global marketing of antennas for Kyocera AVX. Uh, Kyocera AVX is an uh, manufacturing or advanced electronics. Uh, there are many different components, uh, connectors, capacitors, sensors, and among that also antennas, which is what I'm in charge of. And I must say, Carmen, I stopped by your booth uh, right down here a couple minutes before our interview, and I did see a wide variety of different devices from smart meters uh, and connected streetlight sensors uh, all the way to pet finders and uh, wireless headphones. Uh, and Clearly, they all have antennas, so I wanted to ask you, what is the importance of antennas in IoT devices? Well, all the IoT devices are wireless, right? And without an antenna, you can't have anything wireless, so that's the importance. Um, however, nowadays, I think most of the manufacturers, they focus on selecting the right module, the one with the lower power. However, they don't think of the importance of the antennas, and when you integrate the antenna, if you don't have the right product and the right location, you can really reduce the performance drastically, you know? So that's why it's so important to consider the antenna in the very beginning. Sure, and, and, and I know there's many different factors, whether it's cost or uh, frequency or uh, mm -hmm. size, you know, many different factors that go into these devices. So I wanted to ask, what are some of the considerations when implementing embedded antennas? So when you embed the antenna inside the device, I think the most important part is to know the size of the device and where the antenna is going to be because everything around is affected. You know, for embedded antennas, it's not only the antenna radiating, it's the whole device. So you have a very small device, especially for low frequencies, then it's not going to radiate efficiently. You have it very small. So that's, I would say, is the first consideration to have into account. But it's not the only one because you also need to consider if this device is going to be um, implementing close to the human body because the human body can also have some absorption of the power. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> it's not as, as straightforward as people think, right? And so do these considerations typically come from the client? They reach out to you saying, hey, we have a X, X product we're looking for and we need an antenna? Correct. And I think our best partners, I would say, I don't, our best customers are considered partners, right? So they come to us in the beginning of the project. They say, Carmen, we have this project. This is the size. This is the technologies we want to implement. Tell us uh, where we should put antennas. So what they do is that they put the, the, the book the space for antennas. They, they kind of made the size we recommend. And then they design the whole, uh, let's say, um, the cosmetics and everything around it, right? However, in the IoT market, we see that there are so many different sizes of companies, and many times they come to us when I will say it's too late, because they already designed the housing, they already designed everything, oh, and say, oh, now we need the antenna. And sometimes it's very, very challenging to, to be able to implement it there, right? Now, could you give an example of uh, uh, a company that may have come to you too late, as you described, and, and how you uh, resolved that situation? Yes. So. Um, the, let's say like in a, in a tracker, right? They come to us and they say, okay, this is, you know, this device is, is, is not, well, I, I remember one case where the, they have an um, uh, off-board antenna, you know, so you can have it embedded, you can have it antennas on board, right, or directly on the PCB, or you can have antennas off-board with a cable. And people really think that antenna off-board are easier to implement because it's like a sticker, right? So it's okay, I just okay. connect it and I stick it. So this customer came very angry saying, oh, the antenna is not working and what have you gave me? And it's because he placed the antenna on top of the PCB, like a sandwich. So of course he wasn't radiating anything, right? Sure. So we, we had to help them to design a custom design with a very limited space they have around the, the, the housing and the PCB. So it was very, very challenging project, but we finally held them. And they could have 
had much better performance if they would have come to us earlier, right? You hear that? <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> That's great. Um, so are there any ways you can validate the, uh, the IoT device uh, in the tenant performance? Like you said, uh, they had implemented an antenna and it wasn't working. So what are ways you, you go about validating this? So absolutely. So from the antenna side, um, the first part we do is the passive testing. So we, which means that we are only checking the antenna part uh, validation. So we are doing testing like um, return loss, efficiency of the antenna. So for that, we, we have some equipment in our labs. So we have labs all around the world in San Diego, in, in France, uh, South Korea, Taiwan, and China. And all of them are fully equipped to be able to do prototyping, to make measurements. We have anechoic chambers. And we are able to um, validate antenna performance. How is the, the radiation pattern of the antennas? Uh, how is the efficiency, etc. But later on, the next step is to validate the full product, right? And for that, it's not only the antenna, because you also have um, module which is connected to it. So in our chambers, we are able to measure the TRP and TIS, which is total radiated power and total isotropic sensitivity, which means that these are the values that the operators will really use to validate your product. So we are able to do this testing, and then we can see, OK, look, you can go directly to the operator because your product is ready to, to function. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's very yeah. interesting. Um, now, are there any um, are there any other like uh, antenna project that you have done that you'd like to highlight, or any, any uh, very interesting use cases? Like I said, I did see the pet tracker. Mm -hmm. I saw the smart sensor. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so there are two types of different antennas we provide. So one of them is a standard. So because we have, as I said, many different type of pro uh, customers, right? And not everybody has the opportunity to have a custom design for their product. So we have a standard products, you know, based on FR4 and metal stamping, a flexible PCB. But also we are doing custom designs. And this is the pet tracker that you saw is very interesting because the space is like, I don't know, like a few centimeters of diameter. It's very, very limited space. And what we did is that we put the antenna directly on the plastic, which is a technology called LDS. It's laser direct structuring. And what we do is that there is a special resin that has some uh, metal particles that w when we burn it with a laser, you can directly implement the antenna on the plastic. So that helps you to have um, good performance in very small uh, devices. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds like a pretty impressive technology. So, you know, I, as you saw, the, the, the antenna is getting smaller and smaller, in, be, mm. embedded in plastic. Uh, what are the are the are those uh, the limitations, or where are the limitations in this? Is it is it th not the antenna? Is it the actual I the device? Or uh? yes, it's, it's mostly the, the the device because everything is radiating, right? So, one of the technologies that is coming more and more popular in um, in IoT is the band switching. So the band switching means that when you have a passive antenna and you are not able to cover all the bands that you would like to, we are able to use a switch that is connected to some matching components and we are able to switch band so you can optimize for each of the bands instead of having to cover all at the same time. So in Kyocera IBX, we also uh, design chipsets and this is one of our products as well. So we can give the full solution to our customers. Um, and then we have partnerships with, uh, with uh, module makers, for example, with Ublos, Telit, uh, Nordic and many others where we are providing these solutions in reference design to make it easier to our customers. So when they go there, they will find the antenna, the chipset, and the full solution working. So they, are, they only need to replicate that because we already validate that solution. <laughs> That's incredible. So in antennas, chipsets, uh, testing, validation, is there anything else that Kyocera AVX uh, is involved in? We also have a lot of online tools. So our mission, and that's one of the reasons why we have joined the IMC Council, is to make it easier to our customers. Because we see customers which are going again and again through the same challenges, and uh, we would like to give our lessons learned in advance. So we are trying to increase more and more online tools where they can select, OK, this is the module I'm using, this is the antennas I could use. Or for example, um, we, have, uh, we have online an IoT solution optimizer. This is a powered by Deutsche Telekom, and uh, it's, a, it's a very powerful tool. It's a twin di digital twin, that now they say, uh, where you can actually validate or design your full device uh, just by the simulation. 
So it has real data from the module makers, from battery suppliers, and also our antennas. So you are able to put all the, the data there with actual testing data from us. And at the end, they will see how long or how many years uh, your device is going to last in battery life. So that helps you a lot. Instead of doing prototyping and wasting time on, in, uh, in testing, you will be able to have some indication of how your product is going to work. That's incredible, and I, uh, the point you made about sharing the lessons learned, I think we all can resonate with that, what, you know, whether it's antennas or, uh, like I said, we're building smart cities. There, you know, there's many challenges you face. You have to mm -hmm. overcome them, but sharing that information is very powerful. So I wanted to end this. Uh, where could they find this information? You, you mentioned uh, the, the lessons learned. Is it on the IMC, or where, where can they go to learn a little bit more? Yes, so we have um, on, on our web page, and I will, we, I will provide IMC one link. We have all our shortcuts to all the tools, and everything is online. And uh, we have even uh, videos to show how the band switching is working, and we have filters to select antennas, so, and more and more to come this year. So. Wow. Well, uh, Kyocera AVX is clearly uh, doing some incredible work. Sounds like they have a lot of resources online, and uh, I'd like to thank you for your time. Thank you very much for inviting me.